Hey, real quick, shout out to John out there. Talked to you earlier. Gained 50 pounds on his bench press through following Maps Anabolic. Really, really cool. Shout out to you out there in YouTube land. Everyone else, you want to be like John? You got to follow our programs. And to help you out, I'm going to give away Maps Performance for free right now to one of you lucky viewers. All right? Here's all you got to do to potentially win this incredible workout program. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Click on the little bell thing so you have your notifications on. You got to do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Performance. Isn't that great? Also, big sale going on this month. MAPS Anywhere, 50% off. And the Fit Mom Bundle, 50% off. By the way, you don't have to be a fit mom or want to be a fit mom to get that bundle. It's got a bunch of MAPS programs, discounted and then discounted again. Here's the programs you'll get with the Fit Mom Bundle. MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Hit, Maps Anywhere, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. So you get all of those. They're discounted already because it's a bundle. And then it's discounted, again, an additional 50% off. So that's the sales going on right now. It's massive. If you're interested, go check it out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code NOVEMBER50. That's NOVEMBER50 with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. You guys know what this is from? C -c 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 Catch the wave. <laughs> Catch the wave. I don't. I don't know his name. This is a dude you got on your shirt. Right Max now. Hedrum, bro. Max. Yeah. Do you know he was a Hedrum? Head, head How room. do you remember? Do you guys remember his name? Yeah. Like I remember yeah, the. I remember the commercials because they were so. You know, they're those ones that like you know he burnt. Was Catching the wave. Catch it if you can. Can catch the wave. Coke. <sighs> He was the first, but he was fake, right? But the first virtual reality like character, although yeah. it wasn't virtual reality because it was late eighties. No, it was but like they, simulated, like it was like preparing you for. This is what like virtual reality is going to be. Well, like. didn't they? Did, wasn't it also on um, uh, Back to the Future? Did they use him or did they use like a oh, console? Don't you remember yeah. Back to the Future where no. they do the commercials mm -hmm. and he's and it's doing the, the put your, think, your Pepsi, your Coke. And yes, you. I think they were doing like a play on that. They so, totally were. Yeah, because he's... He was but I couldn't remember if it was him. There was something like that in the second one. Right? So yeah. He, yeah. he actually... There was a series on... It's when he's filling the soda up. Yes. And yeah. there was a series on this. Apparently, there was a TV show. It failed, but Coca-Cola picked it up as a as an advertising whatever yeah. mascot. But he had the plastic hair, and they like kind of put like uh, prosthetics in his face to make him kind of look plasticky. Yeah. And then he would glitch a little bit, so you thought it was... It was pretty cool. Dude, tell me who did better commercials than Pepsi, Coke, and beer. Budweiser. Yeah, beer. Nobody. Just beer, like, they just... Nobody. They would, crushed back in the day. I would love to interview somebody who's, like, Paul was part Brilliant. of, like, one of those companies, yeah. like, and and that wave of marketing. Well, look, just, how, look how iconic, oh, yeah. although I can think of one company that, in my opinion, had the most successful commercial of all time, but Coca-Cola made well, uh, Christmas advertising iconic. From the gates. They, you know brand, they, they branded Santa. They made Santa. Santa came from Coca-Cola. And then they did, yeah, the one did that you we know. know? That? Then the polar bears. And then the polar bears. Yeah. That was all Coke. So the Santa we know with the I mean, with you the can make the claim that Budweiser with Clydesdales did that. You don't yeah. see a... You don't see a yeah, a, but you don't have a holiday around that. It's like Coke, Coke, like literally when you think of Santa, what you think of is the Coca-Cola version of Santa. Yeah. That's not what Santa was like before Coke. I remember out. I read that. Yeah, I, I think it had I like the Norman Rockwell paintings and everything to go with it. Yep. Yeah, they used a lot of his yeah. uh, drawings. All right, so here's what I think is the most successful commercial of all time. Still, I believe to this day, played and never changed. Never. It's this original commercial. I almost want to guess this. That's, really? It's Should the we? original commercial we saw as kids, and they don't change it, and they play it every year. And it's that same old ass, and it's a cartoon commercial. It's a cartoon. Oh, I wanted to guess. It's a, is it played around a certain holiday or a certain time? I think give us a little little hint here. I'll give you another hint. It's an owl. There's an owl. Justin's gonna get it now. There's oh, a, the lollipop. Yes, yeah. dude. Yeah. Oh, that's so. How funny? many licks does it take to get to the tootsie pop? Yeah. 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 <laughs> is it always the exact same? same? It is. No change. Okay, so here's another one. I mean, uh, Corona. They basically have the like. If you watch every year, they'll just promote the same exact commercial, every, like with the with the two palm trees, yes, and the music, and that's it. And it's like miles away from ordinary. Yeah, yeah. it must work. <laughs> yeah, you know? like they just keep promoting. That's the what it's same good thing. is when you remember a tagline that yeah. is just like so. Like I'm hey. not even a big Corona guy, but I remember that tagline. Hey, how uh, how long is it gonna be before we see like weed commercials? You know what I mean on TV. That's going to be weird. Are like, they going to, or they'll probably do the same thing they do with cigarettes? Well, they won't ever allow it. We already learned that lesson with cigarettes. Man, alcohol got, got away, didn't they? They got, <laughs> they got some lobbyists. It yeah. is kind of interesting that alcohol hasn't got the same 
ramifications or commercial. restrictions as yeah. uh, cigarettes. Is there but different is rules that? for for hard alcohol commercials versus beer? Because you see a lot more beer commercials. That's a good question. I think no, so. There's, no, there's a lot of hard alcohol. I mean, you know what hard alcohol does though? But... Hard alcohol does it in like a like a. Um, it's kind of sideways. Yeah, it's Sneaky. like they'll, they'll they'll do like a, um, they're it, doing they're tied with the NBA right now. Who what hard alcohol drink is the NBA? And they do like this whole thing. It's you know what it reminds me of perfume commercials where it's like it, they, you, they're not even talking about the perfume or the cologne. It's just no, like, it's like the experience. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. You know. So, so maybe that maybe it has something to do with that. Like you can't maybe there's yeah. I don't know. I can't wait to see the weed commercials though. It'll be like, hey, sometimes you just want to forget. <laughs> you know, weed. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you want to forget. You got all the some time. guy just yeah. like tinkering on his guitar. He's like, Dee -er. he's like, oh. Yeah. And it sounds hella well, good. Sometimes you want to be inspired. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think they're gonna let it. I don't think I don't think you'll ever see I'm a better mom no, probably not. because of weed. Yeah, what I mean, yeah. what are your bets on that? Like if you think that they would have let I don't think they'll no, ever allow. I think because it's it'll be a new market, they're gonna slap crazy ass. They will, because it's already it's close enough like cigarettes. Because yeah, alcohol's been around for so long that they were already ingrained in everything. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's totally different. Do you guys have favorite brands of commercials, like commercials that you really like that like they do such a good job? You know who like how about this? What companies or brands like change advertising? Like so we talked about like mm. obviously beer, they were on the front line of, of of some of those commercials. But like I have like well, well, oh, I mean, Old Spice. Yeah, I was just that's a great wow, call. Yeah, Old yeah, Spice dude. and Axe Axe. Loved, when they first came out, because it was like it With was Terry so Cruz. bizarre and wild. Hey, this is my commercial. I'd like to agree with you, but then why are we on a horse? Oh no! His signature joke! Fair glove? Go away. And then, like, they just kept doubling and tripling down on the formula. And it was like, you'd get a guy, you know, kind of talking about something, and all of a sudden you peel back, and then he's like on a horse. And what a great a horse, call, just you that, know, somewhere else. And he's a Minotaur. Skittles, how many, Skittles did that too. How yeah. many companies? Yeah, but they led the way, though, right? Old yeah, Spice like the led first. the way with yeah. that type of commercial. I'd say the other one is kind of like Axe, right? Yeah. Axe Body Spray when they started the Dirty Balls one. Yep. How can guys clean their balls so that they're more enjoyable to play with? Well, there's finally a tool that can really get the job done. The Axe Detailer. Cleans your balls. Oh, Remember yeah. when that first came out? That went like super, Brilliant. super viral. Brilliant. Yeah, those are, those Very are cool smart. ones. Okay, I was reading some really... I went down the rabbit hole this weekend on uh, glutathione, the master antioxidant. So obviously we... You know, one of the companies we work with is Live On, and they have a really good uh, liposomal glutathione. And when we were all sick with the virus that shall not be named. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we all used it like crazy because I read studies showing that there's a very strong correlation between low glutathione levels and severe respiratory illness. Anyway, went down the rabbit hole on glutathione. It actually has proven performance enhancing uh, effects. What? How so? It builds more muscle, uh, reduces muscle damage and improves mitochondrial function or ATP production. Hmm. So it's actually a good performance based health supplement as well. Wow. Well, That's... what did the study look like? Was this over a long period of time? Was it a decent group? It How was much a resistance trained group. So okay. they were already resistance trained. So they weren't brand new. And they divided up into two. One group placebo, one side did uh, glutathione. And the glutathione showed greater gains in strength, performance, reduced muscle damage. So it's it, they showed it as a, as a successful performance enhancing supplement. I've been taking it religiously. Yeah. Post workout. Now, one thing is there's a difference between liposomal glutathione and traditional glutathione. In the past, glutathione supplements were it was a waste of money because it got destroyed as you would consume it. And the only way to really get glutathione levels up was through IV. So you had so all the studies were done on IV. Then they came out with liposomal where they encapsulate the glutathione in a liposome, which is essentially a fat which protects it through the digestive process. And then studies show that it definitely raises glutathione levels in the blood, like yeah. IV would, for example. That's interesting. I've just been taking it just as a preventative uh, measure because so many people around me right now are sick. And, and I'm just like, I got to like do all the things, you know, mm -hmm. to keep it at bay. But I had no, 
Yeah, I would have never have thought as it like it was a performance enhancement. I didn't either, moment. but I but it is. Yeah. I look, I was just like I said, I went down the rabbit hole and I saw. So should all I kinds add that to it? Because I do the same case when I get like you know everyone's getting sick around me. There's a few things that I start to do. Um, I I try and start to take the the zinc. The, yeah. the, I yep. start taking that. That's I do the to. green juice with Vitamin Organifi. D. I start pumping that up and start being mm -hmm. consistent with that. You think I should add the glutathione to that? strategy or yeah, does, it, because, does it make sense or yes because what you don't want to do is play catch up if you get sick and then try to get glutathione levels to come up because in that case you probably want to use IV glutathione you want your glutathione levels good going into illness so it's probably a good idea to supplement especially if you work out hard you place your body under a lot of stress it's a good idea to so I'm to doing zinc green juice and then now also yeah. the glutathione is there yeah. anything else you would add to that mix on a regular that, basis yeah well like just like Justin said this is what I do because I'm not sometimes I'm inconsistent with taking some of that stuff yeah. but obviously there's times it's like okay if there's ever a time that I want to make sure I'm good on it's all when my, you're about to get sick right where there's lots of people around you that are sick right so dude is, isn't it interesting after um Halloween how all of a sudden we get you know, sort of this break of like flu and all like the, the seasons come. In it's because everybody's of like together. Virus. Everybody's Dude, together indoors. And then you add in the fact that everyone's eating they're, candy. They're, yeah. And they're <laughs> staying up late and like, it's just all the habits yeah. that, you know, foster like a lower immune system yeah. response. I would add, uh, Adam, depending on what your vitamin D levels look like, mm. I would add that. That's a daily for me. Oh, okay. That's then one of my, good. that's one of my dailies, no matter what. Um, yeah, then you're good. Cause I have to. And then the I'm other so stuff low. you could throw in if you get sick, then you start adding things in, but those are good on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, you know, based off what I've read. Speaking of Organifi, those go, I've been telling you about those gold juice lattes that I'll make for Jessica. Delicious. Okay. They're um, they're better than the pumpkin spice lattes at Starbucks. <laughs> Shut up. You're gonna get somebody trying to fight you for that one. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, you know okay, what, Sal? You've gone too far. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 no. way gonna, too far. She's just like clicking her UGG boots right now. Uh, I was gonna say someone's gonna throw an UGG at yeah. me outside. Yeah. No. Uh, so the pumpkin spice lattes from uh, uh, Starbucks are just way too sweet. It's like drinking candy. Yeah. Organifi Gold Juice has got some sweetness, but it's not too sweet. And if you make it with Almond milk or macadamia nut milk, and you add your coffee to it. You know, first first froth it up with the gold juice, then throw in the coffee. It's delicious. But then you get the 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 benefits of the the nice balanced caffeine because yeah. of the because Organifi has got those relaxing compounds. It's a great combination. I, I mean, it's it, tasty. There's no doubt. I just yeah. you know, it's just kind of funny. Like, I don't know if you can <laughs> compare it. Yeah, it's a strong comparison. You know, right? next to each other, but it is good. Listen, right, we'll you're definitely going to fire some people up for sure. <laughs> you know what? You know what people who like to drink candy, uh, maybe. Have well, you had, that's what it is, right? You're, that's who you're dealing with. You ever have one of those uh, those ones from Starbucks? I swear it tastes like diabetes. It's too much, dude. They, they it's just, like the first time. They drown it in syrup. Have you guys ever tried the sweet tea at McDonald's before? Oh. I tried it's that. Syrup. What? So I I loved That's sweet like tea as a kid. Thing, as a kid. I, yeah. now, right now, like as an adult, I like just regular tea. I don't like anything in my tea. Yeah. Uh, as a kid, I loved sweet tea. My mom used to do it. You know, make her own tea at home where she leaves the thing outside. You know, lets the sun like basically. You know what do you call it? Warm Steep it the yeah. is it steeping? Is that yeah, what you yeah. get call all the phthalates it? in there? Yeah, yeah, whatever. So she, <laughs> she she would do that, and then we would sweeten yeah. it up ourselves. And I love sweet tea, so you just I, warm I'm, it up and just pour sugar as you yeah, pretty you much. microwave it. You know. Pretty much. So uh, you know, I I had this. This was a while back. It's been a long time, but it was the first time I had ever had McDonald's sweet tea. And I had this weird craving. You know, I would get weird cravings for like kids. Something you did yeah. as a kid. I'm like, uh, you know yeah. what? I drink tea all the time, but I, I haven't had sweet tea in forever. I'm like, and I heard McDonald's has a good sweet tea. So people would tell me that, oh yeah, McDonald's sweet tea is amazing. Oh my God. Disgusting. It's too uh. much. Have, yeah. Have some tea with your sugar. It's uh. unbel. It is like they put cups of sugar in there. It's I so know. gross. In fact, I wonder, Doug, maybe you could look up the calories on what a large sweet tea at McDonald's runs because it, Tastes How many like, grams of sugar do you think is in that right now? Just guess. Okay, yeah. on a large, I'm going to take, I'm going to say, 50? oh, more than that. I'm going to say 80. 80 grams of sugar? That's how I'm going to guess. Wow, let's okay. See, let's, see, let's see how close I am. Yeah, let's see what Doug, Doug what you, you got. Just, you got, the you got 50, there, 80. Mountain you, Dew has diet. I just want to throw that out there. Diet Mountain Dew? Disgusting. Oh. 160, okay. oh no, that's a, I thought it was 160 grams of sugar. Yeah, yeah. I was look like, at holy the, crap. Look at the nutrition facts, Doug. Click on that. Let's see how many grams. No way it's only 100. Uh, must, they must be using like a nutri, uh, like a sweet and low then. Yeah, what does that say, Doug? How many grams of sugar? 38 grams. Wow, it's almost like I know everything. It's I was so, so close. <laughs> <Stupid>. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, that's I see. I don't even believe that because it has to. So, are they uh, using both though, regular sugar and then like an artificial sweetener to, to boost it? Like, I, it like tastes both? like it has to be. Yeah, both. Now I can't I, believe that's a thirty ounce serving. That's massive. Yeah, I don't. I don't buy yeah, that. Yeah, but still, I don't buy that. Forty grams of sugar in that is going to taste like it's going to taste super sweet. I still don't believe that. I really don't. I think it's sweeter. Well, it than probably that. starts out as that, then the employees are just like. Shh. You know what? Not a bad point. Yeah, I right. wonder how they actually regulate it. Exactly. Yeah. How close are they? Yeah, because they got to do the mixing and everything yeah. there. Yeah. You know what? I used to get craves for the. Oh, the only go. thing at at Mount uh, at McDonald's was the the soft serve. Oh. Now, this one's a little more accurate. Maybe it's 560 calories That's more for like sweet it. tea, no ice, and uh, let me get the the. 141 grams of sugar. Now, oh, now look who's talking. more right. That's more like wow, it. Wow, dude. That's more like it. That is... Yeah, that. hey, you know that first one? Shot. That first one's made by McDonald's, bro. Dude, that's gnarly. You know that, that first ad that you pulled up? That no, was, that's actually not true. Oh. This is actually from McDonald's. Oh, so this is McDo McDonald's. What was the right? other one? Some other company, but it wasn't McDonald's. That is more... It, see, it tastes like that right there. there. Hey, maybe the other one had so much ice, there's like you know, <laughs> half a cup. Yeah, yeah, it's all just water. It's just it's water, just like, dude. Gross, dude. That's ridiculous. Hey, speaking of partners that we're working with, uh, I think it's safe to talk about um, some of our investments that we do and why we invest in certain companies. We, and I think we're all in agreement, right? We might be investing in uh, in Zbiotic. Oh yeah, no, that's after talking to sure. Zach, which is cool. I think Doug, you're releasing that on on Wednesday, Wednesday or, or yeah, Sunday. it's actually this. Is, so it's going to be actually prior, uh, uh, no, preceding oh, this this episode. Oh, so if you're listening, so you'll have a chance it. to have already heard it, or go back and listen to the interview that we did with Zach, which. Couple things. One, uh, dude, such a smart guy who comes off as like super down to earth. Yeah, like, like you still hang out with him, and he's not like, totally over your head. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I remember. I remember when when we were first having him on. Like Sal's big concern was like, is he going to know his stuff? Like, are we going to get somebody who's talking about the science or something? And they don't. We've had yeah. that experience. I don't know if we shared that with the audience before. We didn't. We brought. We, we had. Did, a, yeah, we didn't share it. We had a think. cannabinoid expert he, come yeah. on, and Adam and I both knew way more. Oh, he dude. Did. Well, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> right away, I was like, oh my really? god, we just. Like they a, literally a sit as a bud tender. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, bud tender. <laughs> it's a fucking stoner hipster kid for a bud tender trying know. to break down the science for us. I was like, oh my God, this is so bad. I know. Yeah. So no, but Zach, uh, Zach knew his shit and boy, was it fun to- Bro, it, that science of, of genetically modifying bacteria to perform, to do specific functions- Oh, it's fascinating. It's not just fascinating, it's potentially- it's revolutionary. Yes. Yeah. Pot and- and what they focused on is on the simple stuff, right? So Zbiotic, genetically modified to produce a compound that breaks down acetaldehyde, which is a negative byproduct of alcohol. It's one of the reasons why you feel like absolute garbage the day after. So you do Zbiotics before drink alcohol. Wow, I don't feel nearly as bad, right? But that's a very simple thing. And they're focusing on the simple stuff first as the science gets more advanced. They can do more because at some point... You might be able to genetically modify bacteria to produce more serotonin for you or dopamine or anti-inflammatory, you know, things or whatever, which yeah. is far more complex, right? Very fascinating. Uh, so many different directions, yeah, they can go with yeah. that technology. Oh, yeah. When, when he when we said after we turned off the, the podcast, after we stopped, we were talking to him more and we're just like, D can we like invest? We only invest in companies that really blow us away. And uh, luckily, they were open for it. So. Well, since you let the cat out of the bag with talking about that stuff, I, we haven't shared this on the, the podcast. So all I think you should do that. And it include Felix Gray and Z-Biotics, since those will be the, the two next rounds that we're involved in. So of if you include Z-Biotics, you include Felix Gray, and then the other four companies, which are your favorite, each of your favorites, and which do you think are the most risky as far as what we've invested in? I, Obviously, we, we wouldn't be in it if we didn't believe in all of yeah. them, but which do you guys go, this is this is my champion horse of them? Yeah, I don't know. Right now, Zbiotic's pretty high up there yeah, you, with uh, Luna, I think, are yeah, my two top. One of the risks is always how is the company run? Because they could have a, a crazy product, an incredible groundbreaking product, but yeah. business is business, and right. if it's not run well... yeah then you're screwed. So that's always the risk. But now you say that, but one of the things that I think that hedges that with Zbiotic is they have a patent. Yes. Yeah. So let's say, you know, operationally they they don't know what they're doing, they're having a hard time. There's you no know, competitor. Yeah, there's no competitor and at the bare minimum they could sell they off could sell, sell yes, off the, yeah. the their te technology. Yeah, their technology. Yeah, no, I like Zbiotics for the science. I would say LMNT uh, as a consumer product, uh, yep. I get really excited Another about. I one. see that being a major player. 
especially with like ready to drink. Well, you should have listed everything first, right? So list all the all the companies. There's first. Luna, which is the physical therapy to your door company, and they have the technology that's similar to Uber, and that's that's a billions and billions and billions of dollar market. So that one's pretty incredible. Well, they have the actual ex one of the executives from Uber is now yeah. on their board, covered by insurance. That one I think is probably the most guaranteed. For it's just going to take a while, yeah, to get uh, everybody involved yeah. with that. But yeah, LMNT, I would it. say, would be the other one. Zbotics is also pretty exciting. I like Serenity Kids a lot. That market's also very challenging, but I, I, I don't. I also see them as the best in their particular space. Yeah, Pathwater is interesting. Pathwater is another one we're, we're invested in. By the way, just got uh, Whole Foods yes. 450 of their like 500 locations. Now, what, have what's, Pathwater. what's exciting with yeah, Pathwater is if state and local governments continue to push this agenda of getting rid of plastic bottles, more recyclable, reusable, then they'll sign contracts and exclude plastic bottles. Then, And they've done this in a lot of public schools and stuff. That could be huge. That one is determined, in my opinion, a lot of that's going to be based on the politics. If the politics move in that direction, they'll crush. If not, then it might be a little more challenging because it's water. Water is a very challenging kind of you know product. Um, and did I leave anybody else? Felix Gray. Felix Gray, I'm iffy on, and I know we still haven't invested in them, so we'll see. Because I, I, the, their science is incredible. It's an amazing product in that market. But I want to. I still want to look a little. Okay, deeper. so now that you you went over them real quick for the audience, uh, who? What's your number one pick, and then which do you do you consider the least or the most risky for you? The most risky. Most risky, and then what do you say is your champion oh, that's horse? Tough. Let's all pick. Let's all pick one, and then we're gonna put one. it on air so we see if we're right later. Yeah, on. yeah, that's gonna be fun. Why not? Uh, you know, so I think it'll be fun to talk about it as we as the companies progress. Top two, I would say, are for me Luna and LMNT. No, you can't do top two. I said Come one. On. You get to pick one champion Come horse. Come on. You right. gotta, you gotta one, ride that horse, dude. Yes, one champion horse and one and Luna one, number one. Okay, Luna's number yeah, one Luna. for you, and then most risky. Well, I don't want to say Felix Drake because we haven't invested in them yet, so we haven't decided. No, you're still going to count them. I want you to count. Them, I put so them in as the most risky. Okay, so you think they're most risky, yeah. Justin? So my bottom, I'll start at the bottom. I think Serenity Kids, even though I love you know their product and everything, I just feel like that's a hard one to to break through. Um, and then I, I go Zbiotics is my top horse. Okay. Yeah. Doug. Yeah, I'm going to go the, the same as Justin on that. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. The thing about Luna, as much as I Doug's love the smart. company, is that uh, they're going to have to be able to get enough uh, therapists to meet the demand so that when people order it, there's somebody there for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but they are backed by insurance companies and Which that, is huge. the medical market is not a well this is great free market this <laughs> is great this is great sure. because we're, we're we're evenly split here because I'm with Sal on Luna Luna is definitely uh but I'm I'm with Justin on serenity kids being my my most risky I think so I like it's I like, like I want them to push through but it's a hard one yeah, yeah but nonetheless, I like Felix gray even better really? than serenity kids yeah Felix gray they did a really good job of being like one of the leaders in the blue blogging space I know yeah. that they're, they're connected I believe with Apple Google they're in the gamestop yeah. now so they've 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 partnered up with some good companies already mind pump you know they know what they are doing with that so they they oh, yeah, that's right yeah. <laughs> I want to so, hey they've all company. done that you know? yeah 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 they're all, they're all smart and obviously we all want them hey, to, dude, all to be well but I'll I like I'll tell you it's a pretty like what's his name Kobe invested in 2004 just for people to understand right you can invest in a company that's sold publicly right so the stock market or you could be an early investor more risky but the return is bigger yeah Kobe put 6 million he put into six million into uh, body armor, the, the the drink that you get at you know it's at the Safeway or whatever the sports drink. Mm -hmm. Six million. That was in 2014. 2021, his estate got their return because they exited four hundred million dollars. Which that you, I think you said, and it might be correct. It, he he might have just made more money he did. on that. Did he confirmed? He oh, made it is more, confirmed. That he made more investment money on that than he did in his in career. his entire his career entire ball. career. What about his really? shoe heels? I, I, I don't know if they counted uh, all of that, but yeah. I do know that-, that What did you say? His shoe deals and everything else? Oh, uh, maybe not if you count all that. Yeah. But I mean, it would be impressive if he just outperformed his contracts. Yes. I mean, talking about he was- Oh, yeah. At totally. one time, he had to have been the highest paid yeah. player in the NBA. So, yeah. and he I'm, several contracts, I'm sure he had. Doug, would you look up uh, how much money did uh, Kobe Bryant make in his career playing basketball? Yeah. And if, if you can find just for what he got paid, because- yeah, the shoe deal. I'm sure would that would might push it over, but it would be impressive alone if he literally made more money off of that investment than he did off of oh, yeah. 
anything else. And it was, yeah, it was six million. I was reading that again because I think I said it wrong the first time. I think I said it was one. I thought it was one or two million before, but it was it was six million dollars. And at that time, I want to say that he that made him ten percent yeah. owner. Well, I, I mean. Imagine had we had the opportunity to invest in um, uh, Viore no, I know. when we first got I know. with them. 680? Uh, yes, 680 and million. endorsements. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, so, in, that's with endorsements. Yeah, so if, if you, you pull count, endorsements uh, out. Yeah, he made more. Wow. Yes. Yeah, wow. Look, look at I'm that. Sure, look, yeah. well, so 70% that of their total. He made like essentially 70, more than 70% of his total earnings in one investment. Wow. You know, if you do the math, and right? when you Four figure out the what a frat, it's only six million to him. It sounds like a lot of money. I right? mean, forty percent of all the a, money a he of, made. Put it this way: for a little less than forty percent of all the money he ever made in his entire career, ever one investment did that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Think of all the work and effort he took to make six hundred eighty. That was just one six million dollar investment. I wonder how much influence he had too. I mean, I mean, because seeing that, and then it just makes me feel like I'm definitely going to lose my argument with you know tonal. Because of uh, um, uh, because uh, LeBron, LeBron James, LeBron uh, James is an investor in him now too. So it's like right. you know if you're that if you have that much power as, as a celebrity and you're invested in the company, you're doing everything you can to help endorse it and to push it. So I mean, even you're, if it, not just you're a mega celebrity, yeah. like, like you're world famous, like everywhere. So. Yeah, but you still need to have consumers still need to. Buy, you know, back it up. Like body armor. Yeah, but there's so many people that will buy it just because of his face. Yeah. And, and not only that, but the company, with Tonal was already showing positive trends and signs before. Well, I want to see right. what's happening now. Look, you see what's happened to Peloton. They tanked. Well, it's tanked. I mean, there's stuff that went wrong right, yes. with them. So yeah, they couldn't different. meet demand and yeah. there were supply issues and just, and then people fell off the treadmill or whatever and it just tanked. Well, I heard the yeah. the latest drop had to do with the the news that came out with Pfizer. That's what I heard. I heard that the so Peloton was taking a shit from all the things that you were saying already. Yeah, that was the first hit. But the, ne the the next big fall was when that news Pfizer. just came out with Pfizer with them being able to have the the pill that's supposed to, you know, supposedly get rid of all the COVID. You didn't read that? You had to have read that. What did it have to do with Peloton? Because people aren't thinking they're going to be... The reason why oh. Peloton did so good is because this idea that we're going to be stuck in our homes and we're going to have to do exercise oh, at yeah. home. And so this idea that Pfizer's come out with some sort of a pill that you can take... Well, that's what I'm saying. So people are not going to work out at home like everybody thought. I mean, how's that going to affect a company like Tonal? Yeah. Remember, the cost yeah. of, of getting one of these, electro these electronic fitness devices... Is pales and it's so much cheaper to go to a gym now. I know they say there's so many more features, but the average fitness consumer would buy it for fitness, and then the features. Well, that would make you right because you. That's you, what I said. You made the, the you made the um the the comment in that interview that you know wait a second did you guys make your huge surge in the pandemic like yeah. and so that would mean that a if it got hit that hard just from some Pfizer news like I was saying. That would tell you that 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 space or that um, company is very very volatile with in, with uh, whether people are going to be working yeah, out from it's home just or not. A window, you know, for a lot of these at home you know, type companies that are coming in and thinking it's going to be long term. Maybe it's yeah. not as long as they thought. Hey, you know, hey, you know, I, I got to tell you guys. Speaking of fitness, so you guys know, I, I've been talking about using the sled for a while and having a lot of fun. Yeah. So I don't know if it was you guys. It might have been you guys, Adam. Gave my son this like little walker thing. Yeah, yeah, that's from us. Is that from you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's like a little walker thing. Looks like a sled, yeah. and you can adjust the wheels to make them a little more challenging or easier. Some friction on them. Yeah. My okay. My son is obsessed, bro. We went. Oh, I took so him outside cool. in it. Right. I took a video of it. It'll be up on the YouTube channel. We we put him outside in it, and he literally went all the way to one end of my backyard and back for. Like nonstop, forty-five minutes. He's remember, he's he's one years old, yeah. yeah. And he's just and he's grunting, and he's gripping it, and he's grunting. And then when he tries to turn, it's hard <laughs> to turn. Sounds just like you when you work out. Are you kidding oh, yeah. me? Yeah. My heart was so Hilarious. like full. <laughs> Watch, and he's just, <sighs> dude. And I'm listening to him. I'm like, he's he's obviously tired and pushing himself. I'm like, why won't he stop? And I tried to pick him up, and he like kicks his leg. Ah! Yeah. And then I put him down, and he's like, <sighs> he's and determined. He's, yeah, pushing this thing around the backyard, oh, that's dude. So cute. Oh, it was that a reminds moment. me, dude. I mean, I our, so our season ended, and it was like a catastrophe there at the end. I won't talk about it, but um, <laughs> it, like it's a, it's a little, I want to hear a little about, sensitive there. Huh? I want to hear about you tackling all the kids again, dude. What the hell's wrong with you? Oh my god, I didn't talk about that last time. No, huh? dude, you just <laughs> sent us a picture with all your all your scrapes and bruises. <laughs> I know some of them listen to the show, so I'll try and try and do it justice. But we like. 
decided at the end of one of the practices, one of the last practices, we were just going to have some fun. And, and the coaches were, were kind of lined up all over the field. And the kids were like at the goal line. And we we threw the ball. And basically the whole thing, the premise is that you got to go try and tackle the coach and, you know, get the ball. And so like we're, we're trying to basically create a, an opportunity to condition them by, you know, passing it and run all over the field with it away from them and stuff. And their and goals it, are trying to get you and tackle them. Yeah. And so, of course, inevitably this turned into kind of one of those things where, you know, one kid like tries a little too hard, like rip the ball out. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're going to rip the ball out now? <laughs> so I decided, you know, like to – you know, take a few of them out. And then it got a little bit more aggressive after that and <laughs> tackled some kid, like smashed them on the ground. And then, uh, this one kid, <laughs> they had like this kid, like I, I got the ball <clears throat> and, uh, I threw it away. And then this kid kept coming, uh, at me to try it. couldn't stop. And so I just like, you know, kind of hit him and he flew, you know, <laughs> a little too far. And I was like, Whoa, I, I got, I definitely like got a little carried away. Uh, with, with I swear thing. we used to play a game just like that when we were kids. We were yeah, to tap yeah, each other like uh, that. yeah. Smear the um. Yeah. Uh, me too. <laughs> what a terrible. You you insert that last part. Yeah. I was oh, trying well, to figure that, that this out. This was the '90s. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll tell you, Doug. You got to hear this. Adam and I were sitting out here. Justin's out there. He's getting a haircut, and <laughs> we guess. overheard him talking to Vicky, right? And he's talking about like, yeah, you know, coaching these kids, and he's like, yeah, you know. These kids don't really have like a dark place where they can pull they that aggression out of, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> Bro, I had a full on conversation like, like about this with my still friend. In him or something. Just like you need a dark. Yeah. You need Your life is too have. good, kid. Yeah. It is. They're too soft. <laughs> you gotta have like a little bit of darkness inside you that you need to channel. You know, in a, in a safe setting where it's okay, it's appropriate. Like, let's express this, you know, in a healthy way. But anyway, so. The reason I brought it up is because I already constructed, like I just wrote a plan, handed it off to the AD, uh, you know, beforehand to to make sure because he's running these kids in a class for weight training, and so like the what we got buy in from was like doing tests, and so we started to kind of like run these kids through like a forty time and you know the shuttle run and like some of these things that were like tangible that like they're like oh what did he run? You know, what time did he have? And it's like, all of a sudden, then I started to get buy-in and I'm like, duh, should have had these going like the whole year yeah. and having them pit against each other. It's like, I have to engineer that competitiveness. So, uh, I put like in some of the plans, I had some fun, uh, kind of tests and I, I was like constructed one idea was like for Fridays, we we're going to do this. Like, um, what's it called when, um, um, you, you basically, it's not drag racing, but you're like tractor pulls. Uh -huh. So, so, and I'm mean, use sleds for that. So you stack it as heavy as possible to where you could barely even grind your way forward. And we're going to see how far they can move like the heaviest, like stacked, um, sled Brad. and you know stuff like that where it's like competitive but it's not crossfit where it's aimless it's like has purpose behind it mm. so <laughs> take that crossfit um yeah it's very very much more thought you know goes into that that's awesome yeah a, hey, uh, coach andrews can i can i you know try out for the team uh i don't know is your dad an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is come on come on board if you had any kind of abuse that you can use yeah. and shuttle yeah anything uh, really bad happened benefit. to you when you were a kid that's no, all i've saying. had a great life sorry you dude, can't go on the team. Football's not the sport for you, dude. Go hey, play tennis. Did you guys? <laughs> <laughs> did you just, God, you're just insulting everybody today. <laughs> just throwing it out there. You're going to have LGBTQ after us. You're what gonna do you have mean? To, I didn't <laughs> say that. I stopped yeah, myself. Yeah, I censored you're myself. You're in trouble here. Uh, did you guys see the, the news that happened with the Travis Scott concert? No. Oh, the, yeah. weren't people trampled and squished to death? I thought some people were getting stabbed. Like it was. What? Yeah, yeah, no. I think several people, several people died. Is with that right? Needles. Yeah, Doug, that somebody that was you're... going around and, and pricking people with a needle, and then they're dropping and passing out, and like some people died. Like uh, a security guard got like poked in the neck and passed out, and then the, he got to get revived by some kind of like adrenaline. So the needle obviously had something poisonous in it. Something, yeah, that's what they're wow. speculating. I, and I guess well, Travis Scott, whatever, he got a lot of heat because he was still singing. He, he's still singing. He's looking at. Uh, now I've heard both sides, right? Out. Some people were like, "Listen, when you're on stage like that, lights are in your eyes, crowd stuff's going on, stuff like that. You can't tell, and you're yeah. a professional, so you just keep singing. You don't think it. But then you have other people be like, "That's crazy. It's bullshit. You can might have made it worse." Yeah. You know, if it's a big crowd, hey, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, everybody moves in. and It's such an interesting thing because... Eight people died. 
Wow. 14 to 27, according to what's that say? Yeah, but how many people oh, in the ages crowd? ages 14 to 27. So it might be a small percentage. These group mob <laughs> mentality <laughs> things? Is how they brush under the rug. That's, it's like it was 0.001% yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah. people yeah, it's died. safe as getting vaccinated. Yeah. No, they, <laughs> my bad. Um, no, that's, that's insane. Dude. So this reminds me of, uh, was it the Rolling, I want to say the Rolling Stones had a concert in the 60s. I think it was the Rolling Stones. And they hired, it was in San Francisco. Maybe Doug will remember this. And they hired the Hells Angels as security. Oh, I'm, I've heard about that. So the Rolling Stones did a big ass concert and hired Hells Angels to That's be the awesome. security. And they just beat the shit out of everybody. Beat the <laughs> shit out of people who were out of line. Just fucking hammered people. Yeah. And you and you and while they're up on stage doing their you know doing their act or whatever. Wow. They had to stop them. Like, hey, no, don't. What are you doing? Nah. And they just got it was a whole. No, thing. I mean this is tragic. This is, reminds me of I don't know if it was Great White. I think was the band, but it was like indoors and all of a sudden a pyrotechnic kind of error nobody could leave fast enough and the whole place went in flames and people died you oh know from God. the fire that's so. crazy it was the Ultima concert oh wow 1969 they, they actually they killed somebody in the in the, in the audience yeah wow. it, was, it was the rolling stones uh jefferson airplane and santana and I don't know who thought it was who, uh, that idea. Who do you guys want as security? I don't Dude, know. The, the, the they've mafia. had bad ideas. I mean, the whole Woodstock 99 thing where, you know, you brought, like, it's supposed to be peace, love, and whatever, and they brought all these metal bands, you know, Corn, Limp Biscuit, and, like, yeah. I think Metallica even. But, of course, like, you know, Limp Biscuit like, took the biggest black eye from that whole thing because I guess, like, if I can go back, it, what happened was, like, one of the guys, like, and, and they're such a energetic electric band, yeah. you know, and so he, he just gets the crowd going crazy. And uh, part of a piece of like the stage on, onto the side, like somebody grabbed it and like made like this board where people could like crowd surf on top of. Yeah. And so then he gets on top of it and is kind of encouraging Encourage it. the whole thing. And then everybody starts ripping everything down. And then it just turns into this like riot. And, and you mob know. mentality is well studied and yeah. it's fascinating psychology. If you ever want to like learn about the weirdest in human psychology, read about mob mentality. Normal yeah. people will do the most yeah. crazy they things. Literally turn into animals. You don't need to read anything. You just need to have your eyes open for the last two years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, know. I mean, we're literally it's happening. Yeah, seeing exactly. examples of that all over the place on on both sides. It's for, it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's, it's wild. like let's just not use our brain, you know, and then just go with the 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 mob. Yeah, so I brought them up because they just came out. I, I love like a, a comeback story, and and I had heard from somebody on my like ask me anything. They're like, "Oh, did you hear the new Limp Bizkit album?" And I'm like, "Is it good? It's great. Yeah, it's really good. Really? He's yeah. toned down. Is great. It was like really great. I was like, like pumped because yeah, I was a little. He messaged me and I was. I had, he got me hella fired up. I had an edible and I was. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, yeah. Like, there's this one song called Pill Popper, and it. Fucking slams, yeah. dude. It's it's a great song. Hey, speaking of music, I was listening to Beastie Boys this morning working out. Oh, so good. Okay, do you know how many songs would have been canceled from the past if they were aired them today? Like Girls by yeah. the Beastie Boys? Yeah, yeah, I know. That would be gone. Well, they Completely. talked about that in the Which uh, one yeah, did you not see the documentary still? I still haven't seen you it. You gotta watch that. Right. They, they took a you... they took a left turn from that. That was like the whole engineered a version of Beastie Boys, like mm. you know, they were doing that all for that record company, and then they decided, like, we don't want to be those douchebag party guys. Oh boy, let me tell you, those that was songs. such a cool uh, documentary. I've never seen one done like that. The way they did it, they did it to where they were like narrating. I'm gonna it. write it down because I, I keep forgetting to watch this. Yeah, because it's called something else. It's not called the Beastie Boys document <laughs> the documentary. It's called something to do else, the right? Dishes to clean up my I don't know. Room. I, I, I'm a, I'm assuming it's on Amazon. I can rent it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I had to I think I had to buy it on uh Apple back, but if you can buy it on Apple, you can normally buy it on okay. Amazon, so I'm Wrote sure it's it down. on there somewhere, but it's worth it's worth watching for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of I mean, I love BC Boys growing up and there was a lot of things I didn't know uh about their uh their They band. were one of the first, not the first, but one of the first uh hip hop groups or whatever to to sample, to use sample sampling as part of their music and make it really a, a, a an art. You know? yeah. yeah, no, they're they're responsible for a lot of trends that I didn't realize until you watch that. You watch it and you go, oh shit, they did that first. Oh, and, oh wow, yeah, no, it's they bunch were really... of, was it Jewish kids from uh, New York. Or yeah, whatever? yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Look, if you listen to the intro, you heard me talking about liposomal glutathione. Well, one of the best companies for this particular product and more is Live On. I notice when I take a difference when I take Live On supplements. All their supplements 
are designed to be maximally absorbed. And that's the big problem with the supplement industry. They won't tell you. You take the pill and you get expensive urine. Your body doesn't actually utilize it. Well, Live On is different. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you can actually get a bunch of free product. Here, here's, here's what you got to do, all right? So check this out. Head over to liveonlabs.com forward slash mind pump and get a sample pack of all six of their products for free if you just get one of their products. If you just buy one of the products, you get to try all of them. I recommend trying out the glutathione. It's my favorite, but they have a lot of good stuff over there. So head over there and check them out. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Danielle from New Hampshire. Danielle, how's it going? How can we help you? It's going great. Thanks. Guys, I just want to let you know how grateful I am for you um, and all that you do. Um, earlier this year, I lost my dad uh, to COVID. Um, so it got me to start thinking about my own health and my own mobility. Um, about June of this year, I started working with an FRC coach. Um, and she basically has me unwinding everything that I've learned. Um, so I've always been active. I was a member at the Y. I like to swim. I like to hike. I like to ski. Um, but I started to think about um, there's things I can't do. Like, you know, we're in kin stretch and we're learning about we're going to flex our toes and we're going to roll our ankles around. And, and so I'm learning, a, I'm getting new mobility, but I'm still struggling. Um, and then I came across this article and, and I'm just wondering, so basically I'm 5'9", I'm about 185 pounds and I'm a like a tall pear, I guess you could describe me. Um, and just wondering how does your body shape fit into some of the exercises that you may be able to do or not do? So for instance, a squat. I can get really low when I have no weight, but as soon as I put weight on the bar, I'm back to being parallel. Um, I know what the answer I want you to say is, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I'm just curious to get some a little bit of feedback, I guess. Yeah, no, that's a good question. So the answer is actually in what you just said. You could do a full squat with no weight, but when you add weight, then your form obviously goes in the wrong direction. So that's a strength issue. How big of a role does your body shape play in yeah. in a lot of these exercises? Somewhat of a role, small role for most people, because a lot of these movements are kind of foundational, fundamental, you know, pieces of human movement. So it's like walking, right? So does a person's body shape play a role in their ability to walk to some degree, but really small, right? Because we all evolved to be able to walk. Well, you also evolved to be able to squat and press and row and rotate to some degree and do some split stance exercises. Now, when you get into very technical movements that require uh, very specific types of mobility, then maybe it plays a larger role. But when you're talking about, you know, most of the exercises you're going to do in the gym, uh, a lot of it has to do with strength, mobility, and connection. And much less of it has to do with just our body shape or the length of our limbs or how our joints look. And I know there's like this movement in the fitness space to talk about, you know, hip joint and the socket and the length of the femur and, you know, and yes, there's definitely cases where that plays a role, but it's, it's a lot smaller than people think. For the most part, all of us have the capability uh, to be able to do most of these movements. And what gets in the way is just, you know, tightness, weakness, mm -hmm. and lack of stability. Danielle, uh, first of all, I think the fact that you're doing FRC and you've hired a coach is incredible. Um, I think uh, everything that they're teaching over there is is phenomenal. Oh, it's, it's life changing. Yeah, absolutely, it really uh, is. Yeah, no, I love I love hearing when people uh, actually sign up and start going through that process. It was life changing for me. So, um, I, I think that's great. Are you doing any? Uh, are you following a maps program or anything in conjunction with it? Or are you doing that by itself? Uh, just by itself. And then I work with her, the trainer, three days a week um, doing heavy lifting and stuff like that. So oh, okay. I I am the kind of person that needs that constant correction and that for right now where I'm at, um, I just need someone standing over me and correcting form. And like I said, I, I have done push-ups wrong. I didn't realize this. I was doing push-ups wrong my whole life. Um, <laughs> so it's a little bit eye-opening, but I I just need someone 
right now where I'm at to to guide me through the phases and the exercise and using proper form. Are they are they coming with you in person or are you doing this virtually? How are you doing it right now? No, I'm going to the her studio. Oh, nice. Well, I mean, yeah. and you know, I tell you what, like if you didn't, if you weren't following something, I would have recommended something like Maps Performance. I think would complement. Uh, what you're doing with FRC, but uh, even our programs, uh, I think we've said this many times on the show, nothing beats a really good coach in person, yeah. somebody who can call an audible while they're coaching you and explain to you why this feels this way or what's going on with your body. Hey, let's move over here and now do these movements. And if that coach is doing that stuff with you, yeah. um, I think that it's at this point, it's more just about being patient, yeah. be patient, stay consistent you're doing the right things. I think you're on the right track by having someone like an FRC coach help you out. I think you're in great hands. Yeah. I mean, going back and, and going through all the different clients that had limitations, you know, there, there are, you know, very, very few examples of morphology sort of getting, you know, in the way of, of being able to attempt these types of movements. It's every single time I've gone through it and we've, you know, the more educated I got with, techniques like FRC and, you know, other types of, you know, ways to address connectivity issues and stability issues, uh, it really highlights, you know, just the amount of times you, you've just patterned this certain process forever to where you've, you've self-regulated and sort of limited that uh, a lot of times just based off of like the, the type of habits and routines like you've done over the years. Uh, and there is a way to get, go in there and like you said, kind of unwind and unpack and, and, you know, dive into that process and see like it unlocks a whole new potential uh, movement wise. Uh, and that's what I love about, you know, those types of uh, modalities is it really like highlights the abilities uh, are there, but you have to do maybe sometimes more work uh, to to get back to the root of the, of the actual cause. Yeah, and, and Danielle, you, it says in your written question that you started in June of this year. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 yeah just, you got to get just it warming up. You're just, you're just, yeah. you're just literally. So I, I know, but stronger. it's really hard when when someone says you don't have the prerequisite to do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can do it, you know. Well, you know what? You so don't, don't, don't. T I saw too that it, you. I mean, you admit that it's kind of a shot to the ego for somebody who's been working yeah. out and doing fitness. You know what? Um, it was, it was challenging for me too. I remember the first time that I hung out with uh, Dr. Brink and he broke me down here. I am a personal trainer. I've been training other people my whole life. And then basically to tell me the same exact thing, Hey, you don't have the prerequisites to be squatting that much weight on your back. You should be doing X, Y, and Z. Uh, and, and I'm also somebody who falls under that, like, you know, morphology of, is not ideal for squatting really deep. I'm six foot three. I do have a long, uh, a long femur. I have poor ankle mobility. So it was extremely challenging for me to get to where I'm at. That's why, that's why too, today I'm, I'm more proud about my squat depth than I am any PR I've ever hit in my life. As far as, Oh, I've, you know, I've squatted 420 pounds. I've benched yeah. X. Like, I don't really care about that. I'm more proud about the, the change in movement that I made in the, yeah. the depth. You of, have totally different metrics now that you're applying towards these, totally. these exercises. Right. And yeah, and you, you just have to look at it completely differently, like of how much you're accomplishing, but in a completely different path than you yeah. were before. You're, you're on the right track, Danielle. You're doing yeah. the right stuff. So just hang in there and yeah. you're going to continue to improve for, for a while. I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for calling right. in. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that by the way, forget mobility, forget what this person's talking about. If any, if someone hires me as a beginner, it's, it takes six months Dude, at least so humbling. before they really, st I'm able to really start pushing them with their workout. Literally for the, this is the average, but it takes at least six months. I know, but she's a, that happens. And she's an athlete, dude. This is, I can totally connect with this feeling. Like when she said that, you know, there, it's tough to be somebody who's been hiking, swimming, running, biking, you know, playing sports your whole life and then have somebody break you down and basically say you've been doing yeah. all that wrong right. your whole oh, life. Yeah. yeah, it's a and, shot to the gut. Yeah, and there, there's these things. It, it can be a shot. And then it is a – I think um, – you know, mobility progress is seems to be uh, a little more daunting than seeing just more weight. It's I feel like it's easier to get strong, in my opinion. It's easier to add three to five pounds to the bar on almost any exercise you're doing than to see yourself get an extra inch or two of depth. Well, it's more, I guess, ego rewarding. It's counterintuitive. It? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just more ego rewarding. You don't, you don't. 
I mean, you you, you want to brag about your new PR, but you know, I went you know half an inch deeper on my exactly. Squat. Nobody else gives a shit that I can yeah. get. You know, it's like how much are you squatting? Well, I mean, it's like, well, for me, this is what I'm concerned about. So yeah, that that plays a role. Yeah, too. and back to what I said, it's it's it takes a while. Um, it, it doesn't mean you're not you don't have a certain level of fitness or stamina or strength for what you were doing. It's just you're relearning movements, and it takes it takes a while. She's probably already made tremendous improvements in that short period of time. But wanting it to happen faster, it does just take time. But once you get there and you start to get there fast, you start to get there faster and faster. It's a snowball effect. Well, and a lot of this is just reframing the way you look at, you know, kind of exercise. And to, to Justin's point, um, I had my nephew just call me recently. He just he just transitioned out of MAPS and a ball. He's going into MAPS performance. And he's kind of like overviewing the workouts for the first phase. And he's mm -hmm. like... You know, this seems too easy for me. Should I add? He was, he was yeah. calling to ask if he should add sets or do some of that. I said, listen, I need you. And I know him really well, obviously, so I can I have a little more insight. I'm like, I need you to look at this program completely different than the way you looked at MAPS Anabolic. When you went into MAPS Anabolic, it was about building your metabolism, about getting stronger. Now that we're moving into performance, I really don't care if the workout looks like it could be easier, it could be harder, it could be more, you're get away from the, I want to be strong. And that's where you're heading. Just even though that's your, maybe your long-term goal, the goal of this program is to perfect your movement is to increase mobility. So when you go into a workout, let's say you're doing like the reverse lunge to press with the, the landmine, which is a unique exercise. A lot of people may have not done that before. I, I care less if you called me and said, hey, Adam, last week I was doing that with 50 pounds and now I'm doing it with 80 pounds. I, I would rather you say, I, I started off with 50 pounds and I actually had to back off to 40, but man, I the movement feels yeah. so smooth. It looks so good. You know, I can I can you slow can control it. it. Yes. Yeah. So, and that that's the idea is you, you, but it's hard if you are, you know, like my nephew is, wants to be, he's a, you know, ex football player, strong guy. Like that's all he cares about is getting buff and strong or losing body fat. It's all centered around that and just getting him to wrap his brain around. When we are now working on movement and and mobility, it's a different mindset going into it. So I think she needs to do the same thing as is stop worrying about how fast you ran or swam before, forget about how much weight you squatted or bench press before, and now becomes, you know, what did the movement look like last year and what does the movement look like this year with the work that I've been putting in and and start Start being proud of yourself for the gains that you've made in that direction versus the weight going up or down on the bar. Our next caller is Shannon from Pennsylvania. Hey, Shannon. How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. 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 It's amazing to be on here today. I listen to you guys every day. I never miss an episode. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. um, so I'll just jump into it. So my question is about building my metabolism. Um, so a little background. Two years ago, I competed in my first bikini bodybuilding show. My coach kept me on prep for about 10 months and had me ready eight weeks prior to my show. But instead of increasing my calories and reversing me into the show, she continued to keep me at a, under 1,200 calories and about two hours of cardio every day um, for those remaining eight weeks. So at 5'6", I went from weighing in um, the 140s and I went on stage at 112 pounds. Um, unfortunately, I did stay with her for another prep. Um, that was shortly after that first one, but three weeks out, it was canceled due to COVID. So six months after that, I did get a new coach and she did bulk me back up to about 152. And then we started another prep. Uh, after six months, I decided to call that prep off because my body was not responding uh, and I wasn't willing to ruin my hormones or anything else for another show. So, and at that point, I was at the end of the six months, I was doing about 1200 to 1300 calories, 120 minutes of cardio, and I had only dropped about 10 pounds. So I ended that prep this past May and have been honestly trying to figure out what to do next ever since. Um, so currently I'm holding steady between 140 and 145, um, but I don't feel fully comfortable at this weight. I did try to do a mini cut 
Um, but after six weeks at about 1200 calories and four days of an hour of cardio, I barely lost anything. My body didn't respond. Um, so I know that my current metabolism is awful. I feel like for at with my height and how much muscle I have that my maintenance being around 14, 1500 calories, I, I think that's extremely low. Um, and I know that I need to reverse and increase my calories, but I, one, would prefer not to put on more weight, and two, I really don't want to put on more muscle. Um, I do think that my upper body is where I would want it to be. I don't see myself competing anytime soon again. Um, so if I do put on muscle, I do focus on my lower body. And uh, so my question is, to put it simply, is how do I increase my metabolism without getting that much muscular, if it's possible? Uh, Shannon, so... Okay, at this stage, looking back, actually, right now, while you're telling us about your first coach that had you prep for almost a year and doing mm -hmm. two hours of cardio a day on top of your, your resistance training workouts, when you say that now or when you look back, do, how do you feel about it? Do you feel like it was a good idea? Do you think it was totally damaging looking back? Like, what's your opinion on it now? It makes me really frustrated, to be honest, because I live and breathe health and fitness. And for some reason, I just did what she told me and I ignored all the red flags. So it, it's very frustrating because I if I had a proper coach, I know that I could have I could be really good, okay. a really good bodybuilder. So, all right. And, so and now let's yeah. let's go back. OK, so um, mm -hmm. why? Why did you stick with it that long? You said you live and breathe health and fitness. What made you ignore all the obvious signs that this was not good and this is Were you not a listening bad idea. to Mind Pump yet? <laughs> Serious. I was not. No. Oh, no. I wasn't listening to you guys yet. Um, but I also do have a history of binge eating and I actually hired her as a lifestyle client first to get my macros in order because gotcha. after trying to figure it out myself, it wasn't happening. So seeing the results, like seeing myself actually lose weight. Um, you know, it was addicting, so I stuck with her. Yeah. Okay, so I'm glad you were honest about that, Shannon, and I, I felt like there was something else there that might, you might not have told us. Knowing that, and I do want to say this, and this isn't for you, I think you might have already un uh, figured this out, but this is for anybody listening right now. If you have a history of binge eating or anorexia or any type of an eating disorder or disorder related to that, the absolute worst thing you can do for yourself is enter into some kind of a contest where you get judged on your body, especially bikini or bodybuilding or physique or something along those lines. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very bad um, thing to do. It typically results in worse uh, outcomes for people. And now what we're dealing with is this, Shannon. Now you're in a situation where you literally have to heal your body. You, you, there, no, you can't diet. If you diet, and I think you've already, I think you might already understand this. If you start to diet now, nothing happens. Your body's so resistant because of the, the trauma that you put it through with a ten month prep and then followed up with a very short bulk with another cut. Your body just wants to hold on, has a memory of what happened, and what you have to do is get healthy. You have to give your body a chance to get healthy. So um, the scale, toss it. No more weighing yourself. No more judging your body by its appearance. You're going to have to take care of yourself and allow your body to heal for a second. What does that mean? Feed your body. Eat whole natural foods. Stay away from heavily processed foods because those can definitely be triggering and, and make us want to overeat. Focus on resistance training. I would avoid all that crazy cardio that you're doing because I think you have a bad relationship with it considering you've done hours of it even on your reverse diet. So I would say just walk. Just go outside and walk if you want to do some form of cardiovascular activity. Lift weights a few days a week. Focus on full body and heal your body. Don't worry about gaining weight. Don't worry about losing weight. Don't worry about gaining muscle. None of that matters until you get your body to the point where it, it's healthy and not scared anymore about you know the, the fact that it might have to go back to where it was before. If you do that for a while, I, you, I think you'll be shocked at how your body starts to respond. But it may take a while. It may take you a year or two. You may, you, you've done about a year or maybe even more than a year. You actually did more than a year of this kind of you know damaging approach to yourself. And maybe even before that. I don't know what you did before that. 
So it may take you a year to come out of it, but that doesn't mean within that year you're going to gain 50 pounds of body fat and, oh, my God, what happened to me? If you take care of yourself in a very genuine way, you'll be very pleasantly surprised that you're not going to get some crazy rebound, but you're going to give your body an opportunity to to heal a little bit. And then at that point, you can get back on, on focusing on maybe more of a reverse diet or whatever. But I think right now, if we focus too heavily on calories and macros and the scale and all that stuff, I don't think that's a great idea for you at this moment. You also said something that uh, would concern me if you're a client and I'm trying to help you in this direction, which was that you do not want to put on any muscle right now. And if you've got that in the back of your head while you're also trying to build your metabolism right now, it's mm -hmm. going to be really tough for you to overcome uh, what you potentially might see in the mirror during this process. Because if I tell you to uh, limit or cut out cardio completely, and I say just focus on strength training, feed your body like Sal is saying, uh, there is very much so a potential that we might put a few pounds on, you might look a little fuller, you might build some muscle, um, but I'd have to be in your ear on a regular basis telling you this is just part of the process just trust the process. We've got to rebuild this metabolism. I promise you that losing muscle is one of the easiest things you could ever do in life. So don't worry. We can we can peel it down later if you absolutely hate it. But right now, our focus has to be around getting you healthy. And for me, it would be a little more prescriptive. I know uh, Sal was kind of uh, you know being vague, but I would say you're lifting only two to three times a week. Maps anabolic is what I would have you on. You are not allowed to do any cardio. You could walk. So if you have a routine, because there's the one thing I never want to take from my clients, if you really enjoy that getting on the treadmill or Stairmaster or doing these long bouts of exercise, I wouldn't say, you know, go sit on the couch and do nothing. I'd say, okay, well, go for a nice walk. You know, go walk on the treadmill if you want or ride a, ride a recumbent bike and read a book or do something that's more recuperative and active at the same time. But I do not want you pushing the body and running and sweating doing cardio. Movement is fine, but mainly focused around the two to three days a week of a full body routine. That is it as far as strength training. And then the rest focused around, you know, eating the whole foods and slowly increasing your calories. Our goal would be, can I minimize the amount of, of weight that I put on while also increasing calories over the course of the next six months plus? And uh, Sal's right. You, you, we have to fix this first before we worry anything about our aesthetics and where we want. If you want to get out of this, if you want to get out of this, uh, that's got to be the focus. And um, and again, not to pile on because uh, this this is a good time to to address the audience. Uh, this is one of the, the the my biggest pet peeves with. Uh, online virtual coaches. Now, this is an extreme example because you're a competitor, but this is happening every day to thousands, maybe more than thousands of people uh, that are hiring these people online to give them diets and recommendations to get their body to look a certain way. Uh, and it's dangerous and it's it could really affect somebody long term. And uh, you got to focus on, on health first and get that yeah. in, in, under control. Shannon, are you in the market for another coach? No. Okay. Now, currently, I'm not. If, if you are, if you get to the point where you'd like to hire someone to help you, do not mm -hmm. hire a fitness coach. Don't hire a, definitely don't hire a, a, you know, prep coach. I would suggest you work with a therapist that, that understands and works with uh, either eating disorders or body image issues. So non-fitness related, but someone you can talk to on a regular basis, on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis that focuses on those things. Now, here's how I'm going to sell it to you, Shannon, and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be very honest. If you work with that kind of a therapist, you'll get better results than you ever did with the other coaches. I'm talking about physical results, okay? You will get the side effect of that will be you'll get better physical results, even though they're not going to coach you on fitness or macros or calories. They're just going to work on body image, and they're going to work on eating uh, issues and relationships with food and relationships with yourself. And that's uh, I'll, I'll put my money on that all day long. So, if you think to yourself, I want to hire somebody, go in that direction. Not only is it something that I think you'll just benefit from generally, but I think physically you'll get way more out of that than any fitness nutrition coach that you'll find. Okay. All right. Do you have MAPS Anabolic, by the way? I do. Yes. Oh, good. So you're set. You know what, Shannon? We're going to put you, if you're not in the private forum, we're going to let you in the private forum. I would love for you to give us some 
you know, just just to let us know how you're doing. Yes, every please, couple months, please. Okay. And as the the challenges uh, arise, which they will, uh, share with us, and uh, we'll do our best to kind of help support along the way. Because that uh, for me, I think the hardest thing that I know I would have to deal with is you already kind of know in your head I don't want to build muscle. And so you're gonna you're gonna struggle with that a little bit as you start to potentially put on a little bit of weight. It's gonna be a head game. This is yeah, gonna be yeah. really really hard on your psyche, um, and I can relate. Okay, because I know I went through something kind of similar. So it's gonna be a challenge. Understand that. Know that going into it. That okay, the obstacle in my way is gonna be me, and remember that because you're going to that that side of you is gonna re emerge, especially if you haven't weighed yourself in a few weeks and maybe you're feeling a little bit tighter in your jeans or. Maybe you're you're getting stronger. Uh oh, am I gaining weight? What's going on? That's going to be your biggest challenge. So just keep that in mind, okay? Try to stay above that. Try to maintain kind of an elevated view of everything because it'll lead you in the right direction. Okay. Um, I have a quick follow up. So you said do not focus on any macros or calories right now. So don't count or track. No, nope. no. Eat whole natural foods. Uh, you know, okay. make sure you're eating protein with every meal, but. Mm -hmm. Don't and, and just listen to your body. So, eat until you're satisfied, not until you're stuffed. Does that make sense? Do you know what that feels like? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. that would the if you were going to track anything, I'd say just pay attention to the protein intake. And you don't even have to okay. be precise. It's like you know your 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 body weight somewhere in the 130, 140. So make sure you're getting about 110 there you go. to 120 grams of protein a day. And yeah. as long as you're close to that. Uh, consistently. Yeah, if you're eating 30 to 40 grams of protein three times a day, you're 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 fine. Yep. Yeah, not an issue. I'm, I get around like 160 now. I okay. Would say. Yep. All right. Good. So you're fine. So as long as you hit that, yeah. and then stick to the whole foods, and and then you'll be fine. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, Shannon. Good luck. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I these, get so fucking heated. When it, I it makes me so heat. mad do because get so, it gets me all. Oh, the, I know. This is your guy's world, so I'm just like, bro. Yeah. They they literally prey on uh, people's challenges and insecurities yeah. and the problem is this this coach that helped her here's the worst part of it okay the worst evil is done by people who think they're doing good yeah that's yeah. the problem the problem is these idiots think that they're doing the right thing and it's because they themselves have these terrible relationships right. with their body that's and right. diet and nutrition right. and oh, so they think worked, they're doing the right work, thing this worked for me so let with me do a 10 month prep is crazy with crazy. two hours of cardio 1200 calories a day this is happening all over the place. And this is, again, you know how many people, too, that you know the trend has become, too, to hire a prep coach just to get you in shape. Forget that you're going to get on stage, that this this whole Instagram coaching thing has gone so viral, and that's what people do. Save your do, money. Is, oh, let me look at this body Please. that looks amazing. Oh, they're a pro, you know, physique competitor. They're a pro bikini, so, and they do coaching, I'll so I'm going to- apply the same process. Yeah, I'm going to hire them, get ready for Vegas in three months. These are the idiots that are going to get personal training super regulated by the federal government. This is right here. These, these idiots right here hurting people, well, that's going to make, and it makes all coaches and trainers look bad. I mean, it's times like this, I wish, you know, I, I would, uh, maybe I shouldn't have, but I would have loved to get this person's name out there so that yeah. nobody hires this moron anymore. Well, the truth is there, there's more of them than the other side. I know, you so cut one like, head off, it's like a Hydra, right? Yeah, like it doesn't even matter. Up. Like you're not even, a, you're, yeah, there's too many people that uh, that this is happening to right now. And it's, it's, a, it's really, really sad to see. I'm so glad though that you did bring up um, you know, the, the eating thing, I, you smelt it out right away that there yeah. was something more there. It was underlying. And it, 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 the the irony in this is that the the people that are attracted to this, which we talk about this time, the people that are the ones that need it the least, yep. that's the most dangerous for. If you already have body image issues or you have any sort of an eating disorder in the past, right. literally going to compete is the, the worst, worst thing. thing you could possibly- and Try talking them out of that. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's like being an ex-alcoholic and then signing up for you know wine tasting every weekend yes. or something like that. Like, yeah. what are yeah. you doing? That's yeah. a, that's the odds of you not relapsing into some kind of dysfunction are so small. Yeah. So don't do that if you have any body image issues. Unfortunately, majority of people that sign up for those contests, that's why they well, sign up for those. I know, contests. but the, the pro also the problem is. Are but are also not aware that they have body image yeah. issues. They just they think that, and sometimes it's willingness. Yeah. No, they're willingly unaware. Yeah, like she knows going into this that she had bulimia issues. Yeah. but you willingly ignore. Like, no, no, I'm going to keep doing this. It's not till after when you look back and go, wow, like what have I done? And yeah. it just makes me upset because people in our space. Well, it's bad advice. We it's have the tools awful. to solve health problems, not to create them. Like we shouldn't be creating more health issues. 
Our next caller is Balthazar from South Africa. Balthazar, how can we help you? Hey, what's up, so, what's up, guys? How are you doing? Good. What's happening? No, I'm doing well. Um, so I just want to ask a question around like rep and set volume when training for strength. So just a, a bit of background. I'm about I'm 25 years old. Um, I'm about like 187 centimeters. I think that's six foot one. Um, I'm not sure how the conversion is good. I'm not as good at that conversions, but um, I weigh around 196 pounds. Um, so I play cricket um, for fun. So I, I train cricket twice a week and then I have a game on the weekend. And then I strength train five days a week. So since listening to you guys, I cut down significantly on my um, set volume and my rep volume. And my question is based around that. That So I wanted to know, is it counterproductive to train for strength on your compound lifts? So like what between one and six reps and then for your hypertrophy um, for, the, for the other exercises um, on your exercise day. So between eight and 12 reps. Especially no, if you no, try and gain strength. No, 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 not necessarily at all. That's actually a common strategy. So, like, someone will do like low reps for bench or overhead press or deadlift, and then they'll raise the reps a little bit for isolation movements like flies and curls and tricep extensions. And it's actually not a bad strategy because really low reps for certain single joint exercises really don't lend themselves well to it. So, what mm -hmm. you're doing is perfectly fine. Um, I will say that now your goal, it sounds like your goal is to get stronger in the in the big three lifts. Is that correct? Yeah, I think for my size, I feel I'm not pulling and pushing like um, a lot of weight. I know it's not good to compare, but I feel like I can, like for my size, I should be, you know, doing a lot, like being able to like pull and um, push a lot more how, weight. How long have you been working out? Because I'm going to give you a program, but I want to make sure I send you the right one. So I've been, so I've been, probably strength training for like a year and a half but i've i've been playing sports since i was very little so we had a little bit of strength training in between um but not a lot of focus on it but properly for a year and a half okay. i'd say you're and then gonna, you're not going to go away from anabolic right now are well you? i was just going to say uh how you intense are your practices uh, uh, yeah how, how uh, intense are practices for cricket are they pretty like hard workouts it's three days a week. no so it's not hard it's not hard workouts it's like around two hours and it's basically like it's almost like baseball i could say so it's a lot of like throwing and a little bit of running um but on weekends our, our matches are like nine to ten hours long so i try to stay away from Dang. you know <laughs> doing long. doing <laughs> oh yeah, do, yeah doing push push workouts for like on a friday before the game because I don't want to do a overhead press and then my yeah, um, yeah. shoulders. Dude, cr like, cricket is the ultimate. Out. It's the ultimate spectator sport for the dad <laughs> yeah. who yeah. is like, "Sorry, honey, I got to watch the game a whole day." Yeah. Yeah. It's it's day it beats yeah. golf, even, huh? Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Balthazar, I'm gonna I'm gonna send yeah. you maps and a bowl. That's right. I think that's perfect okay. for what you want and your current, you know, training uh, regime with your sport. We also have something called Maps Powerlift, although Maps Powerlift is better run by itself without okay. additional, you know, exercise and athletics. Right. Maps anabolic I think would be ideal and you can choose two or three foundational workouts a week on it. I'd start you off on two. Do the two foundational okay. workouts uh, and then stick to your normal practice, do trigger sessions on some of the off days. And I wouldn't be surprised if your strength went through the roof. Yeah, uh, powerlifting would be like probably okay. good in the off season, you know, something where you're not like uh, comboing that with your your skills sessions what you're doing in practice and everything else so you could just focus completely on you know getting strong in those core lifts the biggest challenge you're going to have is the mental piece here uh because yeah. you, it sounds like yeah. you're a competitive type of person athlete uh you were already lifting five days a week on a push uh push pull legs and you were yeah. doing three days of cricket so us all of a sudden coming in here and saying okay more than cut your strength training in half and your goal is to get stronger it's gonna sound counterproductive to what you're trying to do but exactly. the truth is this is the direction yeah. you need to go so you need to kind of trust the process uh, you need I'm, to recover to move forward yeah Think I'm, about that. I'm gonna make sure doug puts you in the private forum that way too we could yell at That's you if awesome. you don't listen to us over the next <laughs> couple months because it, this, is, this is the yeah. most tempting thing a young guy like you is gonna have okay it, it totally can relate to this being 25 yeah. years old full of piss and vinegar totally. i'm playing playing sports <laughs> on the side for fun i'm also trying to build yeah. muscle and i want to and the, and the thought is the more i put into it the more i'm going to get out but it's this is not true when it comes to building muscle and strength 
there there is a too much and a too little and i think you're leaning on too much if our goal is to get stronger week over week just simply backing off to the two to three days of maps anabolic routine is going to give you the results you want you just got to trust the process they'll stick with it for a while you don't even have to trust it for that long mm. <laughs> I, I think if you follow it within the first two three weeks you'll see strength gains so within the first few weeks you'll know right away like oh this is definitely working for me that's how confident uh, we are in, in this kind of programming with what you're okay. currently doing. But I would start with the two foundational. The, don't go to three unless okay. you stopped getting results from the two. Um, I, and I'd be surprised if, it, if, it, if you, you probably did a whole three-month cycle with two foundational workouts and add tremendous uh, amounts of weight to, to your main lifts. Another way to use that, I think we gave this advice to someone the other day, is for you to decide whether you go two or the, this is a beautiful thing about MAPS Anabolic. You could have one week where you do two times a week, the next week you do three, and then the week after that you go back to two. It doesn't mess up the programming, so you could kind of choose that if you like. And I, we gave this advice to someone who was in a similar situation. I believe she was like a, a volleyball player or something. I don't remember who it was. But if you can learn to read your own body and 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 have the self awareness to go like oh you know this week we really didn't practice that hard at cricket or the game was easier or my body just feels really good maybe I go to three days a week mm -hmm. and if it's a week where you know you had a you know extra long game or practice was taxing or maybe you had a lot of work was kind of stressful if it's yeah. kind of a higher stress week and you know that you've kind of you know, taxed your body more than the week previous, then you drop to two. So if you get good at kind of paying attention to those things, which I, I recommend you start paying attention to if you're not already, and adjust the the amount of training you're doing based off that, I think that works really well too. Yeah. We'll send that over to you, okay, Balthazar? Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Um, can I maybe just ask two questions around that, um, if that's okay? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. So I kind of have like a history of like, I would say overtraining, like I really like training and I like try to do it every day. But if let's say I can only do the two foundational workouts a week, how do I, you know, stop myself from doing something on that day? Is there something I can replace it with? Yeah. Um, mobility. You trigger sessions. Yeah. Mobility. You can do trigger sessions. You can do mobility okay. work. You can go outside and hike. You can go for walks. You can do yoga. Okay. I don't want you to not be active. Yeah, it's just yeah. low to moderate yeah. intensity. Yeah. I just don't want you to lift okay. weights you know, with high intensity when, every single day. When you get the program, you're going to see that. So even though we're saying two to three foundational days, the other two days a week are trigger sessions. So you technically could be yeah. working out still four or five days. It's just a lot different intensity. Follow the yeah. trigger sessions as applied on there. And if you wanted to do more on top of that, I'd say some light mobility work with there. And a great place to start for mobility, if you don't have any direction uh, on that, is if you go to the uh, MAPS, or is it primeprowebinar.com? Yes. Go to primeprowebinar.com. Literally follow that routine uh, that I do on there. It's about a 50-minute routine. So okay. if you feel antsy and you want to do something and you want to do movement, you follow that. I think that'll have tremendous benefit for you. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem, man. Awesome. Thanks for calling. Right. Yeah, thank you. And I just want to thank you guys again for, <laughs> I know everyone says this, but you know, um, since listening to you guys, like my life has changed a lot. Oh, um, appreciate that. In a personal and like professional life, you know, my relationship, everything has changed. Oh, thank you very yeah. much, man. That much never gets old to hear. Person, thank you. So. Thank appreciate you that, so man. Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. You know, we've had a, a huge uh, surge of listeners from South Africa recently. So it looks mm -hmm. like we've kind of caught on over there, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It, I this love is, his name, dude. Balthazar. I know, right? Yeah. Um, two things that are very interesting. One, uh, I forgot that cricket was that long. I remember I had a buddy who played it, and he said that sometimes they would stop a game yeah. and have to restart it later because it was there's just so it can go on for so long. That's, That's crazy. Kind of wild. Baseball got like long and, and you know winded. Yeah, that, that has to be like yeah. to set the record. One of those episodes on bad sport had uh, one of the on cricket, and I'm like, I was. It gave me like the urge to want to go figure it out because it's so frustrating for someone like me who likes sports to watch a sport and not know what's not going know what the on. Hell yeah, right. it's so confusing it's to me. I'm it sure it's not that like, confusing. What? It's just so new to me, yeah, so I don't yeah. know. But but yeah, back to you know kind of what he was talking about with his with his workouts and stuff. Um, you know, the right dose is the right dose, uh -huh. and I, I know. And I look, I get it, man. I do this all the time to myself. You want to do more because you enjoy the process, which is actually a good place to be. Yeah. You just got to be smart about it. Otherwise, you, the process will kill you uh, also. so, But yeah, if you enjoy the process, I totally get it. You just want to be constructive. So I'm Checks glad he and asked balances, that. man. Yeah. And I'm glad he asked that second part. Like, okay, what do I do? Because I like to move. It's like, you can totally move. Yeah. You just do other things that are going to benefit you. Don't 
It's going to be smarter up. about it. I mean, that, and that's really the key is to just know that there's the right dose there that's going to propel you forward. You do too much, not going to be to your benefit. Totally. Our next caller is Michael from Florida. Michael, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, so I, uh, in the past, I guess, 12 years, I've had two um, major weight fluctuations where I gained a lot of weight lost a lot of weight. Uh, the first one I lost 50 pounds or I gained 50 pounds, lost it all. I did that. I'm actually training for a triathlon. Um, the second one, I, you know, got a job, met a girl, got comfortable, gained a lot of weight, actually got a, a serious injury. I was non weight bearing for 90 days and I, I pretty much gained all the weight back again. Um, and then I lost the weight the second time by doing your favorite exercise, doing CrossFit. Um, right. And then I kind of plateaued for a while. Um, I tried a bunch of different things. I did carb cycling, which screwed up my stomach so bad I had to stop doing that. Um, and then I recently just com uh, completed an Ironman this past weekend. I'm actually still down here now in Florida. And um, I'm kind of like nervous that I, like, I used to love lifting weights. And now everything I've been doing is, is – endurance and like beating myself up. And I, I feel like I've screwed up my metabolism over the past 12 years, um, doing this up and down, up and down, and especially with the crazy endurance uh, training I've been doing the last six months. And I'm kind of done with it. And I want to get into lifting again. And I'm just like kind of lost. I don't really know where to start. I don't want to just go into the gym and, and do the same thing every day. So I'm just kind of looking for your advice. Yeah, no, yeah. good, good, yeah, good question, question yeah. for sure. So, okay. Um, Okay, why why do you do these these events? What are the what's the motivation behind Ironman, triathlon, CrossFit, CrossFit? Like, what's the well, what's the real? I want to I want to hear the truth of like the root motivation right, behind so, why you do these. So, so I grew up swimming, um, and I was actually in a really bad place during the first triathlon I did. I, I got laid off uh, from my job. I uh, I was working uh, in Atlantic City, which is a you know crazy nightlife and. I was just going down a really bad path. So I found a local triathlon was coming into Atlantic City. I decided to sign up for it. Um, and I was really motivated to train for it. Um, I actually met my wife. She was training for an Olympic um, tri distance triathlon and kind of got into it. And then we decided to have a family. And I, Ironman seems really cool. And this was kind of my last shot to do an Ironman for the next 10 years because uh, we ha hopefully have another one on the way. So the time to train really isn't going to be here. Um, so I did the Ironman. The, the CrossFit thing, honestly, I moved to a new area um, and I, I needed to lose weight. And I mean, I was, I probably needed to lose like 40 pounds at the time. And I, I jumped into a CrossFit and it kicked my ass. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And it helped. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I ended up losing a lot of weight. Um, but I, I feel like it might've done more bad than good. Um, aside from the things you do say, like, you know, I was deadlifting, I was squatting, I was doing things that I haven't done in the gym before, which, you know, I was deadlifting 500 pounds at one point. Um, so I know I, long term it's not healthy for me. And especially with, like I said, the gaining weight and, and losing it all the time, but um, I'm done with the endurance stuff, at least for now. Yeah. Do, do you feel like if you don't sign up for, an event or a competition yeah. that you tend to go in the opposite Is it a direction. Motivation thing, a hundred percent. Okay, hundred percent. Okay, so we need to address that first, Mike, because any advice I give you is not going to work unless that isn't solved. Okay, so right. you you have to change the relationship that you have with fitness and exercise because right now, fitness and exercise is you're using it like a drug. Okay, so whatever the other drug is, whether it be not moving and eating a lot of food or whatever, what you're doing is you're replacing that drug with fitness and because fitness is better for you, gets you to move, um, it's not as bad as maybe what the other drug was. So we tend to not identify the fact that it can also be damaging. And I've had lots of, I've had situation with clients that, you know, quit smoking and then they started using exercise like smoking and overdid yeah, it in that right. direction as well. So I want you to change your motivation. You said you're having another baby. Um, I don't know if this will work for you. This has worked for other clients of mine, but I, I want you to focus on longevity and quality of life. So what I mean by quality of life is like, think of the most important things that you have in your life. Maybe being a father, being productive at work, being a good husband, what kind of workouts make you better at those things and keep reminding yourself of that while you're going through what I'm about to recommend. Cause if you do that, you'll okay. stay on the right path. 
if you sure. maintain the kind of relationship that you've had in the past with exercise, the advice I'm going to give you right now is not going to work. It'll be very short term. And at some point you'll either fall off and then rebound by signing up for another event and going or going extreme in another direction or by giving up entirely because it just doesn't feel good. Okay. So the root yeah. has to be there. But once you can do that and remind yourself of that, I think for someone like you, a program like MAPS Performance- I'm glad you went that would way. Be a I wasn't great, sure you're going to go that way, and I do like that a lot for him. Yeah, because uh -huh. you have the athletic background, I think you'll appreciate the functional component of MAPS Performance. There's a mobility component in there, so I think it'll uh, you'll enjoy that. So you can do some kind of fitness every single day. Brand new stimulus in a lot of different directions. Totally. It'll make you feel good, right. but it, you you but you got to remind yourself of that route. What's making me a better person today? Do I feel better today? Do that. Quality of life, you know, longevity, that'll put you in the right, right. direction. Otherwise, like I said, this advice I'm giving I, you is not going to help. I also like the idea of MAPS performance too. I just recently was sharing with the guys that I had a phone call with my nephew who just moved from MAPS Anabolic is now going to performance. And I was trying to to coach him that you have to complete, you have to change your mindset going into this program. And it's all around movement. And so what Sal's saying about quality of life and the child and all this, like I would totally reframe the way I look at exercise. It's like, one, my goal is like, what's the, the least amount I can do to get the most results? Because I'd rather spend more time with my family than in a gym or hammering myself training for like an Ironman. So that's first and foremost. And then I want to be able to do things like squat down and play with my son while he's on toy and not feel like my back is killing me and my knees are killing me. So when I exercise, I'm doing movements that are going to support that and that is like a win for me it's that's more of a win than hitting a new pr in the deadlift or the squat and so when you approach this program you know approach it with goals like that is hey i've never really focused on my squat depth or the my movement quality can i look at these exercises watch the the you know the model that's dimming on them and my goal isn't can i get the weight way up and get stronger in this movement my goal is can i make this movement look perfect like mm -hmm. i'm the model can i make it look better than what they're doing it and and approach your your exercise like that yeah you're re-examining a lot of these familiar exercises that uh, you've been in a race to get through uh, and I don't yeah. know if that resonates at all, but for me, like I, I, I very much have had that mentality that you've had in terms of trying to find the next super hard punishing thing to get involved in. And it was always a race for me to get there. And I just, I just felt like I always needed that. But this is, this is one of those things where you can re-examine a lot of these types of exercises and find out the real value if you just slow down, if you slow down, your, your body is going to benefit tremendously. And then to, to be able to kind of like shift your mindset towards that is going to be able to take it more in a sustainable uh, direction in terms of longevity, right? The, the, the race really is sustainability for you. What can you stick with the longest and not want to just jump into the next thing and, and punish yourself? Yeah, it, it's going to be a practice, okay? Not a workout. Now, you're definitely going to yeah. work out. But I want you to think of it as a practice, a daily or almost daily practice, whether it's one of the foundational workouts or a mobility session. Maps Performance gives you the option to be working out or doing a mobility session, one of those five days a week. Um, you know, Three of those workouts will be a little longer and the other two will be shorter kind of mobility sessions. But go into it like a practice. Like, think of it as a practice. So very zen. Okay, that's the mentality I want you to go into it with and use that, yeah. that same competitive mindset that got you to lose 50 pounds to do a, a triathlon or whatever think of yourself zen quality of life it's a practice once it clicks you're going to find this rhythm that's going to feel very good very balanced and serve you well rather than pushing you to red line and then causing you to stop and you know continue the cycle and by the way you mentioned your metabolism being ruined it's not ruined it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do so mm -hmm. don't worry don't think you're like oh my god i damaged my body what am i going to do your body, your body responded this, the way it evolved to respond, and it will do. It will respond the way it evolved to respond if you do what we're telling you. Yeah. And if you do what we're telling you, what you'll find is your metabolism will start to not worry so much about being so hyper efficient. You're going to build some muscle. You'll start to move better, and you'll develop a comfortable, uh, you know, good relationship with exercise where it feels not ex not just exhilarating because I know you know what that feels like or punishing, or like I survived, like that's okay occasionally,
But the kind of relationship you develop with exercise is, like I said, a practice. Like this sets me up, and boy, can I be a great, you know, father, business owner, employee, husband, whatever. It's going to improve the quality of your life long term. So go into it that way, and I think you'll have tremendous success. And if you don't have Maps Performance, we're going to send that over to you right now. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I definitely don't have it. Um, right. Yeah, my wife will be pleased too. No more 15 hour training weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Definitely. you're a maniac, dude. Just tell her, say, hey, look, the guy said to replace my workouts with sex. So we're going to have to do a lot of sex. <laughs> time, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Done. You're welcome. There you go. All right. Thanks, Michael. All right. Thanks, guys. No problem. Yeah, that's the uh, the old. I, I had. This isn't like the most common thing, but I had. It's pretty common. There's a lot of these. It's I mean, pretty common. I wouldn't say it's like a majority, but I definitely had those clients that they'd finish one race. Got to work out for the next race. The next. I'd Gotta actually find the say next. it's the like next. This, it's like they had to do it that way. Yeah, you know? I'd say it's really common. Uh, but what is hard is getting somebody who's into all these things to convince them that that's their issue. Well, and they it's have not to a, admit it's it. It's not a yeah. good thing, yeah. right? They all. I mean, you when you're in this on this track, a lot of times, it's a good thing for you. Like, oh, I'm going to sign up for the next Ironman. Oh, I'm going to sign up for the next this. I'm going to sign up for the next that, and they don't realize that they have this pattern of oh wow. Unless I'm signed up for something like this, I'm terrible at being consistent with my diet and my training. You know, is there something else underlining there, or is this yeah. a good well, behavior to have for the rest of my life? There's all the gurus out there that they're probably following that you know totally. like really you know hype this up. Like you gotta you gotta get up, you gotta get up at 4 a.m. and like beat you. Know, like there's just so much of that that this message here is just not elevated enough yeah i had a female client that she just was just repetitive over and over again and she got to the point where she was doing like an event every other month and what finally got her to open her eyes was when she could not lose she could not get leaner eating under 1200 calories running 20 plus miles a week and lifting weights four to five days a week <laughs> yeah. and she's like why can't i get any leaner I'm, I can't get below, you know, I don't remember what it was, like below 20% body fat. And I said, well, this is all the stuff I've been telling you. And she finally like, okay, I give up. <laughs> I I'll surrender. Do, I'll do what you say. A year later, yeah. she was eating 20-something hundred calories a day and leaner than ever and working out way, way less. It works. So it totally works. Look, if you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our free guides, right? We wrote guides that can help you with almost all of your fitness goals. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 